Now we are going to talk about a patient of ST elevation MI who has reached the hospital on time. Well, as they say in cardiology, time is muscle. Hi guys, this is Dr. Marwa and today I'll be explaining to you the concept of golden period for MI and then an intervention in the form of percutaneous coronary intervention. So let's get started. First of all, you should know that golden period for MI is the first hour. Why is it important? Well, person can die suddenly. You could have a sudden cardiac death. A patient could become pulseless and BPless. What is the reason for that? It could either be a tachyarrhythmia in the form of ventricular fibrillation or it could be a bradyarrhythmia in the form of Mobitz 2 heart block and both will be requiring specific interventions. For ventricular fibrillation, the treatment of choice is definitely a defibrillation but if you are asked regarding management of Mobitz 2 heart block, apart from atropine, you will use a TCP that is a transcutaneous pacer or a transvenous pacer to accelerate the heart rate of the patient to a respectable value so that at least he reaches the hospital on time or if he's in the hospital, you can definitely ensure survival of the patient. Now we are going to talk about a patient of ST elevation MI who has reached the hospital on time. Well, as they say in cardiology, time is muscle. So in this patient of ST elevation MI, there's a thrombus developing in, let me say, the right coronary artery, which is going to cause a significant ST elevation in lead number 2, 3 and AVF. 2, 3 AVF are the inferior leads. They help you identify inferior wall myocardial infarction and the minimum ST elevation that should be present should be at least more than 2 mm for males and 1.5 mm for females. The troponin I values of the patient are also going to show an increasing trend, but troponin I rises by approximately 3 hours. So if a person reaches the hospital early, trop I can be normal. That is why we study regarding serial troponin I. Troponin I values usually start doubling by 3 to 4 hours and obviously you could have a tripling or a 5 times elevation depending on the severity of illness. In this patient of ST elevation MI, I have decided to go in for a procedure called as PCI, which should ideally be done within 90 minutes of patient arriving in the hospital. So door to balloon time should be kept in PCI within 90 minutes. Let's discuss the procedure. The patient will now be taken up in the cath lab and we can either take a radial or a femoral approach in the patient. A transradial approach is preferred nowadays over a transfemoral approach. The guide wire will be navigated up from the radial artery into the subclavian artery into the root of the aorta. And now we will be performing a coronary angiogram. The angiogram will demonstrate that in this person there will be no flow in the right coronary artery of the patient. That's primarily because of the fact that there's a huge thrombus occluding the lumen of the RCA. Therefore, I'm now going to navigate a guide wire directly into the right coronary artery and the guide wire will be steered directly through and through the thrombus. On the monitor, we can see the position of the guide wire. Once the guide wire is through and through the thrombus, we will now deploy an inflatable balloon and the force of the balloon will bust this clot, destroy this clot and you would be having a recanalization of a thrombosed artery. The procedure is casually called as balloon angioplasty or is called as percutaneous coronary intervention. The good news is that the revascularization has been obtained. The bad news is that the atherosclerotic process is still very much in the blood vessel and there's a high probability that this atherosclerotic plaque might result in development of a MI at the same site or a site may be a little proximal or distal to the original site. Therefore, to prevent the development of atherosclerosis from progressing further, not only do you have to give statins, but in the current setting when we have done a PCI, we will also deploy a stent. Most of the stents that are available nowadays are called as drug eluting stents or DES. The drug eluting stents would be coated with the medicine that will prevent the redevelopment of a stenotic lesion in the coronary artery. Drug eluting stents are coated with two medicines, either Everolimus or Zotarolimus. I repeat the names once again, Everolimus and Zotarolimus. The advantages of drug eluting stents are that they are much more superior. 
they modify the atherosclerotic process and prevent the redevelopment of a acute coronary syndrome in this person again at least specific to this blood vessel nowadays the stents that are available are also biodegradable what i mean by biodegradable is that they get incorporated into the wall of the blood vessel so they're not like a foreign body in the blood vessel but they get incorporated in the wall of the blood vessel and therefore we would be having a modification of the atherosclerotic process in the patient so once you understand the concept behind st elevation mi and a percutaneous coronary intervention i would also like you to be sensitized to a term called as rotabulator atherectomy you see at the other end of the spectrum of atherosclerosis are patients of chronic stable angina who are having narrowing of the coronary arteries this narrowing could be due to combination of fibrous plaque along with calcification in the coronary arteries and once the arteries become narrowed the person will be having chest pain on exercise you see chronic stable angina is not included in acute coronary syndrome why because acute coronary syndrome is about a patient having chest pain at rest whereas chronic stable angina patient will be having chest pain on exercise or on eating a food so on a person of chronic stable angina demonstrated to be having multiple narrowings in his multiple blood vessels if we plan to go in for a rotabulator atherectomy the rotabulator device is made up of diamond bar b u w -R, r the bar will rotate inside the coronary artery at a speed of 1 lakh rpm or excess it will literally drill through the narrowing which is present in the coronary artery of the patient and will achieve a recanalization of the coronary artery of the patient and later on we can deploy a stent at the same side and a revascularization of the patient can be obtained please appreciate that this strategy that i described to you called as rotabulator atherectomy is a device that is used for patients who are having chronic stable angina having narrowing of the coronary arteries this is basically to facilitate the opening of the narrowed artery so that a stent can be deployed whereas prior to this i was talking about a balloon angioplasty and then a subsequent deployment of a stent in the previous case there was a occlusion of artery by a thrombus whereas in the end i have described a atherosclerotic plaque causing a fixed obstruction so both the aspects are to be known to you so to summarize i have basically explained to you that percutaneous coronary intervention with stenting is a procedure that is done in st elevation mi and should be done within 90 minutes second i have described a procedure called as rotabulator atherectomy to you which will help you in overcoming the obstructions in a patient of chronic stable angina where you are having a fibrous calcified plaque narrowing the lumen of the blood vessel to a level that the person complains of chest pain on doing minimal activity these are the concepts to be learned for this particular discussion. Keep watching because knowledge is power and I shall come up with a new lecture subsequently. Thank you so much for listening and your patience.